Sunday service. Today's call to worship is taken from Psalm chapter 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for a new day. Um, Yeah, thank you that we can come and um, join together and worship you and to read your word and to learn um, from your scripture today. Um, We praise you and and we thank you for you are good and you are our creator. Um, You are our shepherd and you always shower us with your love and your grace. And for that, we thank you. Um, We thank you for guiding us and for comforting us. Um, You alone refresh our souls and you alone are our peace and our joy. May we be refreshed in your presence today. Please prepare our hearts and quiet any distractions as we worship today so that we may be open and ready to receive your word and your teaching. Um, Thank you for loving us so much and help us to love you more each day. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh. 
Uh, morning, church. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I hope you uh, you are doing good as the uh, province is going to be reopened. Going a um, couple of days later, it will be going to the stage two reopening. I hope we can enjoy um, dinner outside again, and also we can uh, we can somehow we can come back to the church when the church is ready to be reopened. Uh, before I pray, I also want to say that uh, today after uh, in 2 p.m. We, we will have the AGM. Um, uh, you can log in from 1.30 and it will be uh, an important meeting for all the people in the church. If you are active member, make sure you log in on time. Uh, if you are not active member, you are feel free to join us. The difference is just you cannot uh, have a vote, but it is okay. You should uh, understand this is like um, Reverend Horn really want to become a, a, a retreat for us, like because this year should be, a, we, we should have a retreat, like going to the Muskoka or something like that, but we cannot because of the COVID. Um, but this time is a, for us to gather together as a church, as the, as the body of Christ in unity and let us to enjoy uh, with one another and learn and, and share about what's going on in the last year. And then we vote for the next leadership as well. So um, let us pray for this. Um, let, let's join me with prayer. Let's pray. But I got, we thank you for uh, today. Uh, what a wonderful day. Uh, what a day that it is like you made for us and let us to be rejoice in it and let us to uh, uh, have your peace, your love and your joys always in our life. Um, and Lord, may you continue to bless everyone. Uh, let us to see, um, maybe we don't know what, what is going on in the future, but let us to see uh, full faith that you are there for us and with us. Even we are, uh, we we are not been there, and let us to uh, see the future as well as the the, the church future, Lord. Uh, we we pray for, uh, especially for uh, this afternoon. We will have the AGM for our church. We pray for our future leaders, uh, our uh, our board of directors, and also our new chair, uh, Lord. We we ask uh, you 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 can use them in a mighty way. Let us. Let us to uh, join hand together and pray for them. And as you want us to always to pray for those who has authority because every authority is from you. And Father, we also ask um, uh, the unity will come uh, during this uh, AGM. Uh, no matter it's like uh, people who is like speaking in English or Mandarin or Cantonese, they would all join hand together join their hearts together and then pray and, and, and then to see and testify uh, your grace and your greatness. Lord, may you come. May the Holy Spirit be with everyone and let us to enjoy the time like a retreat uh, with one another during the time in this afternoon. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This scripture reading is taken from Mark 4, 26 to 34. 
He also said this. He also said, this is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up. The seed sprouts and grows through, though he does not know how. All by itself, the soil produces grain. First the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it because the harvest has come. Again, he said, what shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable shall we use to describe it? It is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants, which with such big branches, the birds can perch on it in its shade. With many similar parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as much as they could understand. He did not say anything to them without using a parable. But when he was alone with his own disciples, he explained everything. This is the word of God. Thank you, Jonathan. And let me share a screen for the sermon today. Okay, so uh, today is still in the series of uh, why, why Christ? And today we talk about the secrets of the kingdom of God. And uh, the kingdom of God, the secret, I, I want to share like two, especially two parables uh, in Mark uh, 4. Um, you know, in this society, we, we are always focused in, res in result, right? Result oriented is like very common in many people's lives. Uh, result oriented is like, mean, like, like um, describe an individual organization, like um, uh, we are focused on the outcome, on the result, rather than the uh, process. Um, the most important part is the result first, right? It's just like many sports, if you, 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 if you think about sports, it is always like really result oriented about winning and losing. You can see like volleyball, right? Uh, this game is also about like winning and losing. Um, but for sure, uh, we cannot forget about um, uh, the process of the training, right? The training is very important. I remember I, I coach a club, right? And uh, in the first game uh, uh, of that club, and uh, like two years ago, uh, I, 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 bring, I bring my team to the court and then I saw like one, one family came, a whole big family, like the parents, the sibling, and all the uh, relatives and grandparents came to see their daughter, their granddaughter uh, to play. And I, I can see they, they have a high expectation because her daughter was one of the best player uh, in the team. And, but we lost, <laughs> we, we lost in the semi. This is our first uh, a game uh, of the club, but, um, um, but but I, I, to me, I, I think oh we 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 did a very good job and we train we, we train a short period of time but we even go to the semi but uh, we lost so we cannot go to the final we cannot get any medals and and I can see that that family was very like um, disappointed and this family never come back to see in the in the other, in, in the rest of the season. And then later on, we, we got medals. We got we got we got even gold medal, but they cannot see. They cannot witness. Um, they are disappointed for sure, right? But you know, um, if we are only focused on the result, maybe we, we forget other things because like volleyball have so many things it's like going on. But also, um, um, you show you, you need to know there's a pros and cons as well, right? In a result oriented. It is, if you are focused on the result, it is also a, a driving force, like to move forward, to move, move you forward, right? And, but also like uh, in university, many, uh, before university, many young, young, young people struggle in cho choosing their major uh, because like even they, they have interest in certain area, but they may not be able to find a job after graduation, they may think, oh, maybe I, it is not a suitable thing. Uh, I, I need to pick another like more popular major or some degree that I can have like better job opportunities, right? Then, then they, they may forget about like these four years, uh, university life is also a very import, important process to build up our faith, to build up our characters, and discover 
our potential as well. So result oriented can also have like, can, can blind us to see some of the picture of our lives, right? It, it can be a driving force to move us forward, but it can also blind us to see some of the thing. So today uh, uh, the passage is talking about a secret, about the process and the result. In Mark 4 and 27, he said, um, Jesus said, this is what the kingdom of God is like. So it is about a, it's about the kingdom of God. It is about uh, uh, how, how, how does the kingdom of God look like? And he said, a man scatters seed on the ground. Remember the a um, uh, couple of weeks ago, I shared a sermon about the first parable about uh, a, a, a man scattered a seed, right? And we learned that the seed is what? The seed is uh, the word of God. So when it sows into different soil, like area, like for example, along the path on the rocky ground among the throngs and the good soil, there are like four areas, right? Uh, then it grows or it cannot grow. Remember that, that parables, right? And today it's talking about the same thing as like the man scatter the seed. And then, but transform, but, but the first secret in here I want today, I want to share is like the transformation process is a mystery. So it is talking about the growing of the seed. You can see the plant, you can see the result, but you don't know when, you don't know how, but something is transforming, right? Um, in, in, in March uh, 4, 27, it said night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed, the, the seed uh, sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. So it is a mystery. Growing a plant, if you have going to the garden and, and you can see like, oh, it is growing but you don't know why and you don't know when and you don't know how, right? Maybe you say no, I, I, because we, we, we water it and, and so it grow. Yes, for sure, but we don't know when and you, you don't know the process. It is like night and day when you sleep and gets up and then it grows. You know, it, it means growing is all about God. So it is not about, we cannot force someone to grow. As a very spiritual uh, life, we cannot force people to grow, right? It is a transformation. It is a mystery. It, this process is a mystery. And it is all about God. But the key in here, in this parable, is, is also the, 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 the seed. The seed is the key. The word needs to be preached and need to be heard. And then one day, it will grow. And there will be a result, but the, it is a mystery, so we don't know when. How can I be that sure? It's because God said in Isaiah also in 55, in uh, verse 11, he said, so, so is my word that goes out from my mouth, it will not return to me empty. So it's talking about the word has a power. And when it goes out, it will not come back empty. It will be, and it said, but will accomplish what I desire. God has a, has a purpose. When someone hurts something, maybe after a sermon, you forget everything, but you remember this verse. Maybe after a sermon, you, you just heard about an idea. We don't understand why, but that idea is, or that point is like stay at your heart. That is the word of God. And that is the power of God inside you. And he wants you to to accomplish something that God desired. And then he said, and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. There's always a purpose. So why you come today? Why you, why, why, why you listen to this sermon today? There is a purpose, but it is a mystery. But because of the mystery, so it can be an encouragement to all the people who is minister, ministering the word. For example, like the Sunday school teachers, for example, like the Bible study teacher uh, leaders or the fellowship exec or the, the mentors or the pastors, right? Like me, uh, it, it can be an encouragement. Why? It's because, you know, 
uh, because this society is always thinking about the result, right? We are trained to see the result. Like no matter uh, uh, um, we are driving, right? We, we need to go for exam and then get the license. The license is the result. And then all the process we forget and we just want to drive. We want to get the license, right? That is the result. And we always train to get those results. So even in the spiritual life, we are always also expecting to see the result. For sure, there will be a result for us, but it may be not come right away. So for example, like when we are doing a Bible study with others, somehow in, a, in our mind, maybe we, think we expect something will change, something, something will, be, will, will be transformed right away. Uh, if we can't see the result, and then we would disappoint it, right? But remember the word in, in verse 27, it's at night and day. Whether he sleeps and and uh, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grow, though he does not know how. We don't know how. We don't know when, night and day, sometime, something will happen if we faithfully preaching the word. And that is the key. So enjoy the process and then expecting the result, but we don't know when will happen. I remember one, just like um, last month, um, uh, Mona uh, get a test from, a, from, from one of my uh, volleyball uh, student when I was in Hong Kong um, many, many, many years ago. Like <laughs> when, when we are nurturing uh, that, that student, uh, now, uh, around like 18 years ago or more, maybe 19 years ago or even 20 years ago, and, and when I was still in Hong Kong, I, I, I coached her, her team, and then asked her to have like a small Bible study with her, but she never got, come back for, to the church. Uh, she never like uh, grow on anything. And 18 or 20 years later, now she become a wife, she become a mother. And then she texts uh, Mona that uh, she's going to baptize. Um, last month, and and she remember, uh, we we have been nurturing her during that time, and she wants to let us know now she's going to the Lord. She's like being committed as a Christian. We are joyful, but this is like a mystery. We don't know. We forget what what did we do, and and I don't think it's because of us for sure, but it is a mystery, and also uh, it has been like a long time, like. 20 some years later, then you see something come up. So don't, don't be discouraged if you are one of the person who is like minister or nurturing someone, because it may, it may need to take a long, long time. But as long as you are faithful, something will happen. This is the first secret. The second secret here is in the third parables of the seed. And as I said, it is the unimpressive becomes the significant. You know, to impress someone is so important in our society as well, right? Because we are so busy and we don't have time to know someone somehow, right? Impression is one of the key things we want to show others. Uh, but because of our sinful nature, we always like very judgmental. So if someone does not give you a good impression, and we, we, we will simply ignore them or even reject them, right? And just like the resume in the interview, like you, you want to show the best side of yourself to others. And, and, and then if not, then you, 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 you will not even get, have an interview opportunity. Um, like you need to dress right, you need to impress someone, right? So this is in our society. Uh, we need to impress someone. Um, in this third parables of the seed, uh, it is a, uh, Jesus said, what shall we say uh, the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable shall we use to describe it? So it is still about the kingdom of God. So in the kingdom, uh, when, when God is as our king, what, was, what, 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 what will it be like uh, as as the kingdom. So he said, it is like a mustard seed, 
which is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet when, it, when, when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants. So this uh, third parable is talking about uh, one particular seed. It said mustard seed. And in the Bible said, it's the smallest seed of all seed on earth. So it is the small, smallest, but then it can grow and become the largest of all garden plants. It can be the biggest. It is not very impressive seed, but it comes become a very important, significant plant for the garden. At the end, it said it can, it can give birds uh, to, to perch the net over there. So just like, just like something in here, Jesus and the disciple, remember the, all the disciples, they are not that impressive, though, right? Most of them are like a fisherman, not very well educated, right? We, we, when we see someone now, we are thinking about, oh, what, what degree that person have or uh, which university that person go to, right? We are, we are thinking, and then we compare, oh, that is a great, great degree. Oh, that is a professional degree. And then, we, oh, we, are, we have a different a points of view for that person. Oh, you are only going to this degree. Maybe you are not a great person. We have that kind of impression and judging others. And those uh, 12 people, they don't have degree. They don't are uh, well educated. Some of them are uh, the, the, the Bible call them, they, 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 they are very angry. Uh, some of them are very impulsive. Some of them are doubting. Some of them are not that like great. But you know what? Those people, unimpressive people, they change the whole world after Jesus died. You know, we need to think about that because how about you? Maybe you, 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 you may be like very talented, but then you see someone who are more impressive than you. And you think, hey, uh, how, how God can use, use me? Someone is way better than me. Or maybe you are not even gifted. Um, you don't have anything good at, right? But in God's kingdom, it's not about that. The most unimpressive people can be the most significant person. I show this picture for you guys, Susanna Wesley. I don't think many people know who's this lady, but when you when you see her last name, maybe you associate a little bit about someone, right? So yes, she is uh, John Wesley' mother, right? Susanna Wesley, kind of like not not very impressive woman, uh, but she got many many kids. Uh, many uh, John Wesley have so many siblings, and many of them. They die before because uh, in the in in the in the past they it, medical is not that great so they have lots of kids in order for uh, in case someone die right and and this woman because uh, Samuel Wesley uh, John Wesley's father is also uh, need to do so many things so taking care of so many kids all the burden is on this lady's shoulders and then he she tried. Uh, her best and to nurture all the kids. And then something great happened in this family. Not only John Wesley, John Wesley was the founder of the Methodism, right? And then there's another, another sibling, Charles Wesley also have wrote hundreds of hymns. Even now we are still singing those hymns. So it, it just a, an impressive lady, they, he, she lurcher. Two great, great kids from, from, his, from her time, you know. And I want to show you another person, Albert, Albert McMackin. McMackin is like a, a guy. I don't think you, I, I don't even know how to pronounce his name, but you, you don't know this guy is like, is like uh, because he, he is not famous, but he brings someone to Christ. You don't know him, but you should know this guy. You may not recognize this uh, young man, but you should recognize this old man. He passed away recently, Billy Graham. Albert 
bring him to Christ. And Albert was just a, a farm worker and he believed in Christ and he wanted to share the gospel. And he saw a farm boy and he has so many girlfriends and so don't want to go to a, a, a evangelism uh, meeting and he invite him again and again. And then as he went, he believed in Christ and this young man changed the whole world. So many people through him become a Christian. Even now, his generation, his next generation still continue his legacy to, to preach the gospel to the world. So, you know, the most unimpressive person can, can do so many things. And in the end of this parable is that with such a big branch that mustard seed become the great, great, great plants with such a big branches that the birds can perch in its shade. Just like the big tree become like a comfort, become assurance for many, many birds. I'm thinking about like Jesus. Jesus, the word became fresh coming to us because of his act of obedience to God and die on the cross, save everyone's lives. Everyone can come to him. He is just a carpenter, son. He is just like nobody in the Middle East at that time. People looked down on him when he, even he, he did so many things. And then the religious leaders say, hey, he's just a carpenter's slave. But he make a huge difference. How about you? Today we talk about the secrets. We talk about the secrets of, of the kingdom of God. The transformation process is a mystery. The unimpressive becomes the significant. How about you? Do you believe that you can do something great? I believe we, we can all do something great. Maybe right here, someone very significant may rise up for his kingdom. We don't know. But by faith, we should, be, we should all believe in Christ for his work in his kingdom. Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you for uh, today. An important day, I believe, is like Lord's Day, is to celebrate your resurrection again. It's because of that resurrection, our lives has been changed. Even maybe now, many of us are very young. Many of us are no, not knowing what is going on in, 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 in their future. Um, not even know maybe the next year, some of the, us was going to the high school the very first time. Or some of us is like going to the society to work for the very first year. So many transition in, in this, like after this summer. Father, we, we don't know what is going on, but as long as we are faithful to your word, as long as we are believing in you, something great will happen in our life even though we know the transformation process is a mystery, even though we know that we are not that impressive, but something great can come because with God, all things are possible. Father, may you continue to be with everyone, encourage everyone, continue to be faithful to you, even though maybe we cannot see the result yet, but Lord, let us to be faithful. Father, we thank you. And in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.
So today um, is a special Sunday because we are having our communion together. As we cannot still cannot be in person at the church, um, I hope you can still treasure this time together. Because if you remember, um, the communion is like set up at the at the day at the at the Last Supper when Jesus is going to the cross before he go to the cross so and he set this up in in order for us to remember him so i would like to um give you some time uh if you have not uh, prepared your sacrament um and if you do not cannot find anything um you can uh, just pray with us and you know the uh, communion is for those who has been confirmed or baptized and if you are not uh, confirmed, join the church, or you have not baptized, uh, you can just pray and remember our Lord together. Okay, let's have a silent prayer before we go for the communion prayer. Let's pray. Let's pray the confessions and pardon together. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedience church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our labors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I want to give you some time again. If you want to ask God to forgive your sin, it is a time for you to do so before we partake.
our uh, sacrament together. So let's have a sign prayer. Again. Amen. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent in the fullness of time and redeemed the world. He emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in our likeness. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. He took up himself our sins and death, and offered himself a perfect sacrifice for the sin of the whole world. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, he, you gave birth to your church, deliver us from the slavery to sin and death, and make with us a new continent by water and the spirit. On the night in which he gave himself, himself up, he took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciple and said, take it, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's taste the goodness of God. When the supper was over, he took the cup. Give thanks to you, gave it to a disciple and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of my new covenant. Pour out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of this, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ, offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Let's pray this together. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity that we can have communion together, even online. We thank you for, uh, for God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit is within us. And we ask you continue to be with everyone. And let us not just enjoy our life, but let us to reconnect with you. Maybe through the prayer, through the word, Lord, as the summer is coming, we know that it has more distraction because the, we, we, we break our routine. We have more time. But Lord, you want us always. You are waiting for us. You always want us to reconnect with you, Lord. Let us to do so. Not just like every Sunday we see you, but every day we can have some quiet time with you. Father, may you be with us continually and bless us. And in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. For offering, for those who would like to give an offering, um, you can send uh, through e-transfer at inquiry at tcmc.ca. Or if you'd like to send a physical check, please send it to the church office during church hours. And now it's time for the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let's receive the benediction by faith. The Lord bless you and keep you. 
the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. A few announcements for today. Uh, first announcement is community service and worship. So on uh, Sunday, July 4th, um, there will be a few events. 3 to 5.30 will be collection of items for food bank at the front entrance of the church. And we'll also serve one another through car wash and prayer in the parking lot. So please come out for that. And then at 5.30 to 6, we'll be drive-in worship also at the parking lot. And you can register for this online. And if any questions, please contact the pastors. Second announcement is today's AGM at 2 p.m. So all active members are encouraged to join an email. If you're not a member, you can still, you're still welcome to attend. So please come out to that. And third announcement is Arts Fellowship. So this coming Tuesday at eight again, um, we'll be having our uh, arts games night. So we'll be playing some art themed games. So please come out to that as well. It'll be fun. And here are next week's uh, worship responsibilities. And please stay for the breakout room. <laughs>